I never thought I would be talking to you guys, telling you guys, I just got a brand deal potentially with Poppy. I am interviewing for a nurse externship. Like when I put them on the pole socks, they were satting 80%. So immediately put them on oxygen. As I was transferring them to a wheelchair, I noticed that they actually had JVD. If you are in nursing school, EMT school, they always teach you like this is bad bad like we gotta get some help good morning you guys happy thursday Whew, i am just now waking up thanks for clicking on this video i am so happy that you're here if you are new to my channel hi i'm casey i'm an accelerated nursing student and an er tech so today is a busy busy day we have a nursing interview and we have my pharmacology lecture. Then we're going to head on in for a full 12 hour, seven to seven night shift. Now in a perfect world, I would like to sleep in later than 1030. Like I'd like to sleep in until noon, but I have my interview. So we got to get up and get ready but i just want to lay in bed so bad you guys i was just looking at my emails before i got out of bed and i'm grinning ear to ear right now because poppy wants to work with me i literally just shot my shot yesterday and I emailed them, um, you know, just like, hey, love your products, love your brand. And they responded. And I'm just over the moon right now. So it is an absolutely great day. We got to get up, do our makeup and go. I just filmed a little get ready with me for my TikTok. And I am starting to get butterflies, you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm definitely more excited than I am nervous. Um, I think I look really good. Just that was another reason I wanted to film this segment. I wanted to see how I would look on camera, which I think it looks perfect. You can't even tell this is actually like a mini dress, but the neckline I thought was perfect for interviews. All right. The interview is going to start in seven minutes. I think I can get on early. I'm just looking at the email. Oh, you know what I should do? I should make sure, I need to make sure my Zoom doesn't need to be updated. All right, we've got a full glass of water. I have gone to the bathroom. I've got my phone and everything on do not disturb. Clean my camera off. Perfect. All right, this is the interview setup. I will talk to you guys after because I need to like zone in and focus, but I'm so excited, you guys. I will let you know how everything goes. Thank you so much. Yeah, those are all the questions I had. Awesome. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys. I think all my interviews went super, super well. I am just over the moon that I'm even getting this opportunity. Um, the interviewer who interviewed me for medical specialties, we actually clicked really well and we had a very similar story of being non-traditional nursing students. So that was great to obviously click and talk about, but I, I'm so excited. I am just like going to be glued to my emails the next couple days to see where I got chosen. So I'm so, so excited. I'm so, so happy. But it's 1230 now and we have class at one. I normally don't dress up for class, but I don't know. I just thought this outfit was so cute because, you know, I already have my makeup on. So might as well just look the part for class. Maybe it'll help me be better focused because I look more professional, but I need to make my lunch and then it is time to head off to our three hour pharmacology lecture. You guys, I actually just wanna take a moment and talk to you because 
I'm feeling so blessed. So if this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, I just want you to know that I didn't always, I wasn't always the person that got things. I'm hoping I'm phrasing that the right way. So I went through, to be honest, a very awful time period in my life where I was depressed. Um, I actually was kicked out of college and I had to bring myself back. And that was very hard for me to do. To be honest, I probably just need to make a whole video about it. But I never thought I would be talking to you guys, telling you guys, I'm about to head off to my nursing school pharmacology lecture. I just got a brand deal potentially with Poppy. I am interviewing for a nurse externship. Like those are things that because I was in such an awful place in my life and the lowest, the lowest time period I've ever been in, I didn't think that I would ever be successful again because I was so depressed and I didn't see that light at the end of the tunnel. So if you're watching this video right now and you are going through a hard time, whether it's school, your personal life, anything, just know that, that whatever hardship you're experiencing will not last forever. You can change the outcome of anything and if you truly want something and you 100% give yourself and work for it, you can get it. And I'm a prime example of that, you guys. Like, literally, I was kicked out of my undergrad because I was failing classes. And you know what? I had to have a come to Jesus moment and realize that you're not going to get anywhere in life failing classes and we got to do something with our life. And I didn't know that nursing was the path that I wanted to initially take, but I just kind of recommitted to myself and started working hard again. And I figured it out along the way. And that's the thing. If you are in that dark, awful place, you don't know, you don't need to know what you want to do. You just have to work on yourself and get better. So I am just over the moon right now. Let's pack my lunch and head off to class. I know. My mom would kill me. Stop. I That's criminal. I know. Eight dollars. It doesn't. It's not the right color. Yeah, it wasn't very. It's like too sweet. What place was it from again? Yeah, I'll be on my way out, thinking that I'm good. Right, suddenly you pass by, now you're stuck on my mind, thinking I was done now. But I guess I'll never be tired. A few, a few. Took the quickest nap of my life. Also, if you hear something, it's because the dishwasher is running right now. I feel like every time I vlog, I've got the dishwasher going. Um, to be honest, I don't know if I actually napped or if I thought I was napping, but I wasn't. Um, I definitely don't feel rested, so that's great. Um, I need to pack my lunch. So something that helps me so, so much is Torin, my boyfriend, and I, we meal prep at the beginning of the week. So I already have food made. I just have to put it in containers, which is so nice because I literally need to work, leave for work in 25 minutes. Going 
Good morning, you guys. I just got off work and I am dead tired. It is 7.24 and my watch resets at midnight. But since midnight, I have taken over 9,000 steps. My calves are aching. I smell so bad. Uh, so last night, our staffing was not the best. And so after 11 p.m., it was only me and another tech on the floor. And that other tech ended up sitting on patients most of, like I would say basically 80% of the night. So it was basically only me on the floor. So I just feel like I was running around like a chicken with its head cut off. I didn't eat my first meal until 3 a.m. I didn't even eat all of my lunch. You're not going to sit with me? Uh -huh. I didn't even eat all my lunch just because I didn't have time to eat. It was an absolutely hectic and wild night. Um, but on the flip side, I also did get to learn a lot. I actually participated in a procedure I've never done before. Um, I helped out with a lumbar puncture on a neonate. So unfortunately, this neonate had a fever. And when you have a fever and you're in your first like month of life, we do a complete and full workup on you just because your immune system is so limited. Like some, you literally don't have an immune system. You basically just have the antibodies from mom and mom's milk and that's it. So this baby had to get a lumbar puncture. So my job during the procedure was to comfort the baby. We have something called sweeties and it's just literally sugar water. And um, this baby was so small, they couldn't take a pacifier. So I literally just like put it on my finger and they sucked on it during the procedure. And that like really soothed, soothed them. Um, and so that was great to do. I love kids and I actually love babies. Babies are so cute. And then you guys, I got to hold the cutest baby. They were such a joy. They were so, so cute, and it definitely gave me baby fever for a second, and I was like, okay, you, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. Um, and then I did precept two people. So two new techs like, followed me around for four hours, and I precepted them, and we actually witnessed a clinical decline, which I feel like was a good experience for them. So basically this patient had a trach, and while their trach was being suctioned, they just like desat it, went from like 90s to 50s, and then became super tachycardic. So we ended up having to bag the patient. And then fun fact, if you have a patient with a trach, you either need to bag the trach, like put the BVM over the trach, or you need to plug up the trach. So, but Torin is here. And so I want to chit chat with him. Um, oh, but Torin, guess what? I got recognized in public for the first time based off my YouTube channel. Oh, really? One of you guys, I walked in, dude, I walked into a patient room, and the first thing they said to me before I could even introduce myself is, I follow you on YouTube. Wow. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. So if you said hi to me, thanks. And, um, yeah, that was just, like, wild because I've never been recognized in public before. And I was like, oh my God, I'm getting recognized at work. I don't quite know how I feel about that. But I'm gonna shower, go to bed. But right now I just wanna chit chat with Torin before he's gotta head off to work. Good morning, good afternoon, whatever time you wanna call it. Um, it is three o'clock. I don't know. Yeah, it's 3.47. I have honestly been awake since 2.30. My body just woke me up at 2.30 and was like, let's be awake. And I have not been able to go back to sleep since. So I was like, you know what? Let me just get up and start my day. 
It's not super ideal for me to wake up that early. The earliest I like to wake up is 3.30, so I woke up an hour early. But it is what it is. That's kind of the disadvantage of working night shift. You have a shitty sleep schedule. Or I guess I should say, at times, you can have a shitty sleep schedule. Usually I sleep really well. I don't know what was going on today. I was gonna have some cereal, but then I just realized I have wraps and we could like a little breakfast burrito situation. So I think we're gonna do that. And then I just wanna chill before work. Um, sometimes I go to the gym, but that is just not in the cards for me today. My feet actually still hurt from walking so much yesterday. So we are gonna tame these claws and then just chill before work. I personally like to go to bed immediately after work. That way I can get up, see the sun, be awake while the sun is out. I know some people stay up during the day and then they wake up right before work. I don't like that because then I don't really get to see Torin or other people or do other things. Good morning, you guys. We just got off shift number two and it was a really good shift. I was out in triage and if you're new here, then you don't know, but I love triage. It is one of my favorite places to be. And I triaged some pretty interesting patients. So let me drive on home and let's talk about them. Or actually, you know what? I'm really tired. So. <laughs> I'm gonna go home, shower, and then I want to flip my schedule because tonight was my last shift for the week. And I wanna be able to spend time with Torin and just like do normal things throughout the day. So I will tell you guys about my really interesting patients at noon when I wake up. So basically I found that this is the best way to flip my schedule from night shift. I go home, take a really quick shower, get the hospital off me, and then I will just take a quick four hour nap. And it is so hard to wake up, but once I'm up, I'm really glad I did because then I didn't miss out on the whole day and I'm still able to do stuff. And then that way I go to sleep like really early like I'll fall asleep at like 10 and then the next day I'm refreshed and ready to go so I'll see you guys at noon hello you guys so it is now 4 30 I was not ready to talk to the camera earlier I woke up at 1 and it honestly took me like two hours to get going because I was so groggy. But I wanna to talk to you guys about the patients I triaged last night. So when you're out, when I'm out in triage at my facility as the tech, our responsibilities are to register patients and help take vital signs, help put the patient wristband on and take EKGs as well as round on patients so if our department is really busy sometimes people can be sitting in the waiting room for a long time and so we just want to check on those patients make sure they're not decompensating stuff like that but i wanted to take a moment to talk about sickle cell crisis so sickle cell disease is something if you're going to work in medicine you should be aware of basically the quick pathophysiology of sickle cell disease is, sorry, I feel like I'm like shaking the table and it doesn't usually do that. So sickle cell disease is a disease that affects red blood cells. So usually red blood cells are like a nice disc shape. Patients who have sickle cell disease, their red blood cells are a sickle shape. And you can think of that as they're like these, this C shape instead of being this nice round circle. And so because they're this C shape, what can happen is in the vessels, these blood cells can aggregate together 
and this can be extremely painful as well as because the blood cells are not their normal disc shape oxygen can have a hard time binding to hemoglobin um, so these patients can be anemic and all sorts of other issues can happen from the sickle cell so Patients who are in sickle cell crisis, active crisis, this is a medical emergency. According to ESI, which is the Emergency Service Index, these patients should be in acuity two. Um, and these patients need urgent intervention. And something I didn't know about is um, sickle cell patients, where they're having pain, that is literally where the blood cells are aggregating and aggregating together. And so sickle cell patients who are having any sort of chest pain, that is super, super serious because they could potentially have a PE, a pulmonary embolism, or they could potentially have a clot in their heart. So you always, always want to do an EKG on sickle cell patients who complain of chest pain. So this specific sickle cell patient had come in and their face was obviously swollen as well as they were having left extremity swelling. Um, and then when I put them on the pulse ox, they were satting 80%. So immediately put them on oxygen. And as I was transferring them to a wheelchair, I noticed that they actually had JVD, which is jugular vein distension. I'll put like a picture of what that looks like here. And if you are in nursing school, EMT school, they always teach you that like if someone has JVD, like alarm bells, like you need to get going. Like this is a sign, like this is bad, bad. Like we got to get some help. Got them to a room. They had a full workup done. It was found that the JVD was being caused by this patient had a DVT. I know I'm throwing a lot of acronyms out there. Hey, Torin. Hey. I'm just updating the vlog. Okay. So this patient had a DVT, which is a deep vein thrombosis, a clot in their arm. And that was what was causing this um, venous backflow. And so very, very serious. And so this patient... Okay, so actually quiz time. If you have a patient who has a DVT, a clot, what medications do you expect this patient to be given? I'll give you a moment to kind of think about it. What are we gonna do to treat this clot? So you should be thinking that we're gonna give this patient a blood thinner, which is exactly what happened. Um, this patient was being put on um, a continuous blood thinner. They were put on heparin to help treat the DVT. This patient was given aggressive pain management treatment. I mean, so patients who are in sickle cell crisis, you got to pull out the big guns. There is no like NSAIDs, Toradol. We are jumping straight to opioids or opiates. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time pronouncing things right now. Um, but if you've never worked in medicine or you've never like noticed how we treat pain, we always start small and then go up with treating pain management. But because sickle cell crisis is so incredibly painful, um, there's no reason to start low. Like you're not going to help a patient in sickle cell crisis at all with like NSAIDs or any of those like lower dose, less aggressive pain management. Like we jump all the way to the big guns. Like we're pulling out the morphine, the hydrocodone, like all that hard hitting stuff. That's what happened with that patient. And I'm trying to think what other stuff I checked in. Oh yes. So something that you always, always want to do whenever a patient has a fall, you want to figure out why they fell. Was it a mechanical fall? Mechanical means they like tripped and fell. Or did they have a syncopal episode? You know, did they lose consciousness? You always want to figure out why. If they lost consciousness for an unknown reason and that's what caused them to have a fall or they got dizzy and that's what caused them to have a fall, you want to do an EKG because that dizziness and syncope could be cardiac related. And then your next question is, did you lose consciousness when you fell? If they lost consciousness, you want to assess for level of alertness. So you want to see 
um, if they're alert and oriented times four. So alert and oriented times four is a, alert to time, situation, person, and place. So usually I ask, I, I tell the patient, I'm going to ask you some kind of silly questions. Who are you? Where are you? Why are you here? And usually I'll ask like what month it is or like if it's around Christmas time, I'll be like what holiday is coming up, stuff like that. Um, just, and then, well, if we're in triage, I will like quickly assess pupils for um, reactivity and like size and make sure they're all equal and stuff like that. Um, if you have a patient with unequal or non-reactive pupils and they recently had a head injury, that patient is emergent and they need to go, go, go out of triage and they need to get seen. Um, checked in a lot of cold flu symptoms last night, which is interesting because we're kind of like on the back half of respiratory season. Like it's kind of coming to an end. So I guess, you know, those viruses and bugs are just trying to like hold on and whatnot. Um, but overall, it was a really good night. I am super tired still. My body aches. We were so, so busy just all throughout the night. Um, and it was a full moon, which working in medicine, like I never believed in like celestial events having effects on people until I started working in the ER. And I was like, oh my God, it is so true. The celestial events, just special things happen on those nights. So right now, Torn and I are going to go grocery shopping, and then I think later tonight we are going to get dinner with some friends. Torin, yeah. are you ready? Yeah. All right. I will catch you guys later. <laughs>